Good morning. This is the time set for cases G24060295M and G24060295C. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and G24060295M. Um, and G24060295M2. We have counsel make your appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Dana Dwayne on behalf of Julie and Paul Page, who are present today. Good morning, Raina Dahlia Hunt for number 13367C on behalf of the children. Good morning, Your Honor. Thomas Standish for Dylan Houston, the father of the natural children. Right, and Mr. Houston is present on Zoom. Um, all right, we continued to the last hearing to I'm today. sorry, can we clarify who SDFS is? That's my firm. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> they listen to date, so Thank I you. don't forget to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we continued the hearing to today because we, uh, you know, because of the joint motion that was made to move the custody case. Um, Chief Judge has granted that motion on D21635. 772D, uh, according to the minutes from the 711 hearing, but there's no order been signed yet. Who's supposed to be doing that order? I'm doing that. You're just going to be delivered today, Your Honor, tomorrow morning. Okay, because uh, I was hoping that we'd have somebody from Jones Obello here. My intent, as I told you all at that hearing, would be to have one trial. Um, and, and said it, you guys needed a longer trial if we're going to do the custody case combined with it versus just doing a trial over who's going to be guardian of the estate. So that's my intention. I would also, um, my intention that once it is transferred is also to grant the interventions so that we have a clear order on that and go forward. Um, but I wouldn't be changing any of the temporary orders Judge Henderson made without fully brief motions. I mean, it's even more short time, but you guys were supposed to have the custody trial this month. So I'm assuming discovery's done. Your Honor, it's, it's actually not, and it's kind of weird procedurally because uh, Judge Henderson wasn't even going to hear my motion to intervene until the first day of trial. Um, likewise, so I don't even have, actually have access to the case file because it's sealed. I've been receiving it from Jones and LaBelle. Um, putting that aside, there was also a, a motion for an order to show cause filed by LaBelle in relation to uh, Sunshine Collins. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that issue. Yes. Um, she has declined to issue a report even though it was uh, due last June. And Judge Henderson set that for the first day of trial, too. So we believe it's extremely important for us to receive that information. So we could bring an OST to have it set in front of your honor on short in time. But it's imperative we receive that. I think there's a couple uh, depositions that might still need to be taken. Um, and then Mr. Standish and I were talking about potentially uh, trying to mediate this in mid-August, if possible. All right, because um, how many days, let's see if it's realistic. Um, Mr. Jones, and his firm got the lit with what I <laughs> say, and that way, how many days do you guys think you need to try both the custody issues and guardianship of the estate? Well, you heard that depends on other pre-trial rulings. Uh, for example, I made a claim to both opposing counsel that I I don't see why the Jones LaBelle firm and Lexi would be parties to this action. Are you is the court going to grant a separate sort of grandparent visitation statute access to Lexi when her parents may in fact if they get a timeshare she could get it through them and I, I not that I have anything against the Jones and LaBelle firm. I know them well and their colleagues but it will greatly expand, in my opinion, because of the, what I see as Judge Jones' approach, and he's not here, he can speak for himself, but <laughs> that they've been ultra-aggressive in their discovery in every other way, so it'll delay the trial because there'll be a lot more discovery, and the trial itself will be greatly expanded. So I, I, I know you would not make that decision. It'd be the same as anything else. We'd have to bring motions, but I just wanted to say I don't know if the court has any inklings in that regard or any opinions that could guide us. And yes, I agree, we are trying to see if we can do me private mediation on sort of an expedited basis. I haven't had a chance to talk to my client yet about that. Um, certainly, we've talked about mediation in general, uh, but whether we can do it as quickly as, as uh, we were talking about this morning between counsel, I, I don't know. But yes, we're going to try to do that. And we have potential 
mediator or mediators that we can choose from that we agree. So I'm sure we can agree on one of those, and I think if Mr. Jones is involved in Ms. Lovell, they would, they would agree to those people to try to mediate. Yeah, and for the record, we do have Mr. Jones joining us. Um, good morning. Good morning. I invited you because I was going to be scheduling things. I think that's why, and that's why I joined, just to make sure we're not uh, uh, recreating the meal. Yes, so uh, I, tell you, I, th I think we need two days, possibly three full days. I'm willing to give up to three full days. Um, but. Some of you may know and some of you don't know that I, when I set a trial, I hold you to that time and I will divide it up. And it, I will only divide it in two so you all can make, make a decision on who's aligned with whom uh, on the custody and, uh, issues and stuff. But I'm only gonna divide it into two and, and divide the time and I will cut you off unceremoniously. Um, I'm not a total dread, draconian about it, but I will cut you guys off and try to get, because we need to get trials done. That's the reason. So if you want me to set it for three full days, I can do that because we're going to do both custody um, as well as the guardianship of the estate in there. But that, I don't know, takes much, that doesn't going to take much time. I could probably do that trial alone in half a day. But I'm looking at September 25th, 26th, and 27th. That'll be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That I can give you guys. If you don't need the Friday, that's all better for me. But And they are, in fact, full days? Full days, yes. Start at 9 o'clock, full days would be the only thing on. That's also the family law conference in Lake Tahoe. Oh, that's, that's why it's <laughs> probably why I have, I, mean, I have the availability because uh, I wasn't planning on going. Um, as I also, for lots of reasons, but maybe my own preference is to get this trial done before I have the other yes. trial in October. And I did indicate that to Mr. Standish this morning. Yes, that's right, Your Honor. She did. And if I don't do those dates, this may be a lot on, on the counsel who's going to be involved in both cases, but I could I do have another uh, trial in a different matter that is expected to go because it's, um, I have a sword when it's the age and uh, preference. <laughs> and that's on an October 7th stack, so. Guardianship, but I think putting three trials within a month is probably a little much. Yeah, because I could finagle it to do maybe the 9th, 10th, and 11th of October. I don't think I, I definitely can't find anything earlier than September 25th, and that allows you guys a little more time to figure out some of the, the things that still need to be figured out to be ready for this trial. Let me, uh, do, do you remember when the Palmer? Yeah, I have to know. Yeah, it's right before it's the Nevada Day. Yeah, it's, it's the very end of October. 23rd and 24th oh, yeah. of October. 9, 10, and 11 work for me, Your Honor. Same with me, Your Honor. Mr. Standish? Uh, yes, I'm clear, Your Honor. Okay, so I'm going to move. I have to move one trial, but I can make them work. All right, so let's do then the 9th, 10th, and 11th and set a calendar call on uh, the 3rd of October. The same day as the other. Yeah, yeah, that's completely wrong. Really. That's yeah. much more convenient for me. Uh, yeah, Thursday the third at nine thirty will be the calendar call. We'll issue the. I'm going to wait till I get Judge Weiss's order. Then I'll issue the uh, scheduling order in all the cases under all three case numbers on there. And then, as far as the intervention, uh, would you prefer that we do a stipend order? Because uh, Mr. Sanders and I also discussed having my clients added as custodians since they take the children to and from school as well, and the children generally stay at their house. I'm definitely happy to, to sign whatever stipulations and orders that everybody wants to do, and um, and it works on getting keeping the children. 
safe and, and where they are so that everybody has the access they have already. Like I said, Judge Henderson had a very detailed hearing, so I wouldn't be changing any, unless you guys agree to something, I won't be changing it without a full motion briefing on that, so I can do that. If somebody wants to change what their existing is before our October 9th trial date. Um, as far as guardianship of the estate, my plan would be to extend the temporary guardianship um, with Mr. Page until the trial date. And then I didn't see anything on the retention of counsel to pursue the wrongful death. Mr. Standish, I didn't know if you, I know I said that in an order showing time, so it was her today. Did you, did you have a position on that? Yes, we, we don't, we don't necessarily have an objection. I, I just think that I want to make the record clear that to the extent that my client may have a conflict of interest, considering that they would be potentially pursuing assets against his mother or family members, that I didn't want to engage in too much uh, discussion on that. But no, we don't, we don't oppose it. We know that the court already indicated your inclination that they should move forward with that, so we don't want to interfere with that. It's the scope of the representation that we may have to discuss with counsel as to who the potential defendants are. Uh, it's awkward, but I mean, the Prince Law Firm and other things have been discussed in that regard. I'm not intimately familiar with all the details of that. But no, for this motion, we, we agree they should have counsel. We have no objection. Yeah, the only thing I saw in the fee agreement is to add um, to the retainer agreement the understanding that plaintiffs are minors and they're going to need approval from this court for any settlement. I believe we did. I didn't see that in there, but I, I, I specifically asked that he did, and I do believe it is in there. It's at the tail end of one of the paragraphs. Yeah, to be... Because I did make that clear that any settlement or anything needs to be subject to court approval. Right, and then, um, yeah, they, should, I, they probably have dealt with many minor... Um, it, it is uh, paragraph 10. It, is, it has the language okay. that we need. Yeah, I mean, to me, nobody can, I don't think anybody can argue with their willingness to do it without a fee. It's about the qual if there's any questions about quality of the proposed counsel that, and, and that may become up more in the other guardianship case than in this one. But um, if everybody's com comfortable with the quality of counsel that they're gonna do their best on behalf of their clients, then I'm happy to approve that. Unless, uh, there is gonna be separate counsel engaged for Okay. And we're working through that right now. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be on pro bono. We're uh, trying, but we'll bring the appropriate petition and that proceeding yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I like efficiency of coordinating the efforts because the until we get actually a pot of money to talk about, then then the conflicts come into play at that point in time. But getting pursuing the claims with the council for competent and familiar with that and how to do that and how to structure that kind of kind of claims and who to who to sue all those things I leave up to ex more experienced people than me on well, there. Your Honor, in that regard, that's what I was trying to diplomatically talk about. If present proposed counsel that they want to hire has a problem suing the Prince Law Firm or because he was close to Dennis in some way, then perhaps we would need separate counsel for that if there was a cause of action there. I don't know what has been discussed in that regard. I will represent that to the extent there is a cause of action, they do intend on suing uh, the Prince Law Firm. Right, there may be insurance coverage. Correct. On that. Correct. That being a bit the business. Okay. I appreciate that being stated on the record. Yeah, I mean, everybody here is on the, I, I think is on the same page of having as much available to the protected minors as possible. Correct, Your Honor. For their, their needs going forward and their, their legal rights. So um, if, Mr. So Williams, if you can prepare the order on that issue so we can move forward with that, and I can do the order today extending the temporary guardianship of the estate, then we'll go forward. Because everybody, no matter whose guardianship of the estate, it all has to come through the, the court, and every attorney is going to be able to represent their client's positions and have them heard. But right now, I think going forward with getting that started would be the best interest of the protected minors on that. So we have a trial date and the intention is to, um, there. and Mr. Standish, I know you weren't at that hearing. You and I weren't at the hearing in front of Judge Henderson. So I, I, I don't think that there's a defense 
reading all of the Court of Appeals cases and the Supreme Court cases on 125C 050, I don't think there's a defense to the intervention. I so agree. We, we would stipulate. Stipulate. Okay. It's only for access to the file. Yeah, the yeah. Order. I mean, it just makes sense to have the intervention done. And then, of course, I know you guys already have, somebody's had proceedings in front of the um, Discovery Commissioner, so he's available to help with that. As far as Dr. Holland, I honestly don't Colin. know what to, huh? Colin? It's Colin. Oh, oh, yes. I, I, I okay. was thinking of Dr. <laughs> no, it's Dr. Dr. Sunshine Collins and, and that issue, I haven't looked at that issue and frankly don't know what's there, so maybe somebody should apply for a no order shortening time so I can have the time to hear that and, and give notice to uh, Dr. Collins and get that in front of me so that we can hear that ahead of time, know what we're going to have, I, evidence wise or not. Can I ask, what, going back to the council issue, yes. and again, this is such a unique circumstance. So, with respect to Ashley's estate, there is separate council being retained. Okay. And um, we intend on seeking court approval in the probate proceeding to the extent there's any settlement. But since it's ultimately going to be for the benefit of and do you want us to uh, seek approval in this court as well? I mean, we're willing to do that. I don't think I, I need to do that. Yeah. Okay. That I mean, they, they've already been appointed personal representatives for after the state, right? Well, they're special right now, but they will be appointed the general. But I, I just didn't know because there is obviously an overlap in that the children will, are the ones that solely benefit from Ashley's estate if you wanted us to come in to get court approval of that as well. I don't mind doing it. I, I just didn't know what your preference was, and I just wanted to be up, up front with, with your honor. Yeah, it's not, my preference is, uh, is to let the probate judge do their job, but... Um, I guess in some ways it doesn't matter if it goes through. It does matter how it's divided up, because through the probate it would be divided equally between her correct um, heirs, because that she's um, did not have a will, is my understanding. That's our understanding. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that would go under intestacy between her three children, right? Correct. Um, versus the wrongful death claims may have different mm -hmm. values to them, um, just considering that both of her parents including her financial support correct your honor and then um just so you're aware the attorney uh that intends on handling uh that action is willing to do it pro bono as well okay. all right anything else we need to handle today i don't think so either. i don't believe so your honor all right sorry has this been involved? I actually spoke to Mr. Standish this morning about the schooling, and uh, my clients are actually going to reach out to Dylan to discuss. But we did speak about uh, Emma going to St. Francis to sales uh, for kindergarten. Um, I didn't know at the time I spoke to you, Mr. Standish, but I guess Jack would still have to stay at Primrose because they don't have a preschool program. But the parties had previously discussed day school, but the whole um, the whole pushing uh, for day school was because Parker went there as well and it was more convenient for Ashley, but now that's out of the equation. I think it makes sense uh, for St. Francis to sales, which is closer. All right, well, if there's definitely a stipulation I need to sign, just send it in and we'll get that signed. Uh, once Judge Beast signs his order, I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> until, until he signs his order, I technically don't have any ability to do anything for you on the, on the fee case, but. I wanted to make it clear where we're going is to get everything tried on the merits. We're going to have a trial, uh, hear, the, hear every, all the evidence, and we'll go from there. All right, thank you all.